They just brought the king's chariot, as promised. the king's chariot. Here we go, Nathan, show him the king's chariot. Power king. As promised, we brought it. We bought it. Look the action. Why do you not have a power king? Because I haven't come across one yet. I got five for sale, Carol. <laughs> I have five for sale. <laughs> yeah, but they're all done already. No, no, no. No, I got a few that's not. It'll be right up your alley. I'll donate it. That's donation on video. I will donate a Power King if uh -oh. you do it on your channel. And just mention my name and Nathan's name. Oh, that's it. Oh, that now I'm getting a Power good. King. That would be a good idea. Well, I guess that will be the Ride Queen. Not the there ride it is. King. There it is. There you go. There you go, Terrell. Heck yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. Ride Queen. We're going to deliver it to your shop a Power King. Nathan and Richie and I will what? bring you a Power King to work on. Gonna... And you can donate it to whoever you want to donate it to. It's yours. <laughs> now I'm going to be the king. And you can be a power king. Nice. Getting a power king. Definitely. Power king 1614. Made in USA. With a 16 horse crawler, right? Or is that a 14? It says it on the side, 14 horse. 14 horse Kohler. And we got a steering wheel for you, it's in the seat. Although it doesn't. Uh, it goes on, he'll put it on. The power kings are orange. My wife thought I had one power king. I have seven power kings. But I would only bring one out of the garage at a time. So for the longest time, she thought I only had one until one of her girlfriends looked in my garage and seen how many I had, the gig was up. Girlfriend shouldn't be allowed in the garage. I agree. Okay, the king went and got a battery. And just for the heck of it, let's see if this thing will crank over. I doubt it, but we'll see. a fluffy. Well, it cranks. Did they run out? No, you just blew the nest all over the place. Hey, Nathan. Fluffy out! Well, I doubt if it's got spark. Man, you thought it was right? No, I didn't think that. I haven't tried it. Fresh out the barn. Look at that. It's got a brand new air filter in it. From 1970? From 1977? <laughs> I doubt if it's got spark, but we'll find out. <laughs> There's your power, King. <laughs> the King lives again. <laughs> got gas in it. How long, Dooley? How long ago did you get this? Three years ago. Holy crap! <laughs> was it running when it? I never tried to start this. But never. Did, did the guy say it was running? He never said. He said it, it was in his field. I got it straight from a farmer's field, and look, it started up. There's your dinner. Terrible. There's my dinner. There's my. There's the king's dinner. Everything. Courtesy of Junior. Thanks, Junior. Thanks, Junior. So they held up their promise. Dooley, Nathan, yes, and we Jacob, did. and Jacob, my newest grandson. They held up their part of the bargain. They said they were gonna give me a power king, and they delivered. So now I'm the king. They look very. Good on you. Isn't it awesome? This is 
is so good. I'm He's so the king. Now you gotta wear the crown every video you film to pick yeah. it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you yeah. gotta wear the crown. And we gotta learn how to walk like this. Okay. We're the king. All right, now we need to get the power king off this trailer. The king needs his chariot, but we have no steering wheel. So I got a hillbilly steering wheel. <laughs> hillbilly steering wheel. And now we can drive it. Funny thing you say, hillbilly steering wheel. I'm known as the French hillbilly. I was born I didn't know they had hillbillies in France. I was born in France. My dad was born in Calhoun County, West Virginia, in a log cabin. That makes me a French hillbilly. Proud of it. I thought maybe you were from Louisiana. No, I was, I was born in France. There's a lot of French down there. Get my water out of my truck, please. All right. Kate's chariot has arrived, as promised. Pterodactyl here. And today's video is going to be on this. Hey, yeah, that's right. On this here, Economy Power King Model 1614 that we got from Terrell Fan Dooley and his son Nathan, as promised. And they came through. Here it is. Now we got to get it going. So the first thing we're going to tackle is the steering wheel. So Dooley done give me a steering wheel with it. But it had, part of the steering shaft was still stuck inside there. And as you can see, they, they sawed it off. You can see the saw marks. So then I had to get that piece that was in there out. Now I know a lot of y'all, you know, were like, oh, I wish you would have showed the work. Well, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get it out. And I might have ruined the steering wheel and that would have just been a bunch of wasted time. So what I did is I drilled right next to it. And then I was able to spray some lubricant in there. And then I was able to knock out that frozen piece that was in there. Because this is a plastic steering wheel. I can't heat it up with a torch. I would have just melted it. So I had to get it out of there without heating it up. So that's what I did. I drilled it out. And then once I sprayed lubricant in there, I was able to tap on it with a hammer. And the piece that was in there came out. So the next thing I had to do was get this off, this piece. So what I did is I did my old heat quench trick, which we've got a video on. So I heated this up cherry red with the oxygen and amphetamine torch, quenched it, and then I was able to get this off. Let's see if it'll come off. The nut. And then this came, and then I was able to get this off. Where's my hammer? It's right here. Whoop. So this is what's actually inside here. This is that piece. And then they mold the steering wheel around this. So when I did that, I didn't realize that inside here is a plastic bushing. And look, when I heated it with the oxygen and amphetamine torch, it melted this bushing. It ruined it. So I started looking at it, and I seen that it had these little pockets, and I go... That almost looks like the wheel bushings for an old Murray tractor, which I've got a bunch of these sets of wheel bushings up there. See, front wheel bearing set for a Murray lawn tractor. There's the part number. I don't know if you could still get them. Right here. But I've got like three or four sets of these. I can't remember who, who I got these from. So I looked at that and I went, yeah, there's those little pockets. 
And if you remember, I used one of these on the, um, the held hauler when I was making that steering shaft. So sure enough, look, fits in there perfect. So you, uh, you Power King guys that may have this steering box set up, that's a bushing you need. And looking at this steering box that they use on this thing, it's the same steering box they use on them Palominos. Because I was looking at them Palominos when we were at the show at the different steering boxes because mine has got a steering box on it. The original one was like from a Ford car and then as they produced later models of those uh, Palominos they started using this lawnmower type steering box. It's just on the Palomino it's turned different. So this uh, Pittman arm you know is, is like this. So it goes this way to steer the Palomino. This one they got it that way. So now we got a steering wheel. So I'll put some uh, never sleeves on these splines and the threads. So in the future, we can get the steering wheel off. Oh yeah, and that never sees you can get in our online store. I'm using the copper stuff. All right, so I do have to do a little modification here. I do got to clean this up on the inside, so this will fit over it. So let me let me clean that up. There's some plastic stuck in there because this has got to go over that. I may have to sand this down a little bit, but that's got to fit in there so we can put the steering wheel on. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, I can feel it's a little bit heavy, this plastic bushing, so let me try to... Beautiful. That didn't take long. All right, now we can put the steering wheel on. Just kind of straighten the wheels up. And we'll put it on just like this. So I found a fine thread nut, which you can get at any hardware store. I'm not gonna use this acorn nut that they had on there. You know what, I'll get a washer, too, to put on there. We find a flat washer to put on there. And then we'll put the nut on. Okay, we got our steering wheel on. Now we can steer it. Oh, look at this. Oh, slipper. What you doing, working on old power key? Yeah, that nice. a fan gave us. Oh, yeah. Getting it ready for a tractor show or something? Yeah, we got an upcoming tractor show in Valparaiso, Indiana. Oh, and they're sweet. Featuring the Power Kings. Nice, I'll be there with my tractor. You will? Yeah, I'll be showing it off. Great. <laughs> Maybe I'll be uh, parked next to you. <laughs> nice. I guess we're not going to the show now. Oh, why not? Come on. Come on. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the seat. Now, even though this is a nice, cushy seat, this isn't the original seat that came on there. So, Elkskin said he had a seat, a metal pan seat, which is what I want to put on there. There you go. So, we'll take this seat off because it's holding water, for one, as you can see. Now it's turned into a mosquito farm. I'd rather have something like this where the water can pass through. Uh, uh, I don't want that 
there's gonna be water around me. <laughs> That's the way to go with that seat. Now you're an expert on seats. Well, vintage, cool looking stuff. That's not like vintage. That seat is. Looks way cool. This is off of an MTD, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Many troubles daily. <laughs> Now we know it's gonna run because we hooked a battery to it. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa, don't get my slips all wet, dude. And get out of here. And then this way we can get at the battery because this battery is shot. So this has got one of those uh, universal battery cables on it. And then this one looks like it's about ready, just ground. Eh, that's not too bad. Maybe I'll put another universal one on there. Let me get my cable cutter. Flipper, put your finger in there. Yeah, I don't think so. Cut through that like nothing. Can you ever one? I'll just unbolt it. Battery out. So our, our goal is to just get this thing running and driving and working so we could take it to that tractor show at the end of the month. So I do believe I have a good used battery that came out of a tractor that was junk. <coughs> <coughs> Get out my spider knife. Oh, that thing is nice. Cut this back a little. This thing is sharp. That thing's sharp enough to do surgery. One more surgery. More medics? Remember those guys? Yeah. There's a channel called Mower Medics. Really? Mm-hmm. He's in Texas. Jeremy. Have you ever heard of him? Uh, He's a real mole medic. I think I have before. Not just, you know, one that we play on TV. <laughs> What's so funny all the time? What's with that little hee 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 hee? Just laughing, Terrell. Is your funny guy? Is there something wrong with you? No, not at all. You're up to something. No good. Oh, I don't think so, who am I? Ronnie? You know, some of this cabling is broken. So since I pulled on it and I got some more, get out spider knife. And I'll cut this back a little further. Get to some fresh, some fresh wire in there. There we go. I'm going to cut this that old end off here. All right. Now I'll go get those universal battery cable repair ends. And then we'll see if it'll crank over. Put the seat on. Then we have to do the carpet trader. 
Let's see if we can get a run in and hopefully we won't run into any other issues with this thing. Now we need a gas cap too. How's the inside of that thing? Bad. Oh, it's all full of rust. Looks like you might be throwing a different tank up on there. Or maybe I just get it clean enough to use in the meantime. I'll get a new plug for it too. New plug boot, this thing is hard as a carp. So it's just a lot of little things. All right, let me get some stuff. So I got a set of these universal battery terminals from Stend, which you can also get from our friends at ProPartsDirect.net. So here's the Stend's part number, 425-117. And it comes in a pack of two. Get out spider knife again. My spidey senses are tingling. <laughs> so what I like to do with, with these, is you see how it's got these indentations on it and they got them facing up. Just to give it some more gription. You gotta be careful because there's some nuts on the back side that are captured in, in there. I like to flip this over. So it'll give it a little more bite when I tighten it down. And I want to lose those little nuts. They're fit in their little pockets under there. Loosen this up. Now I can shove that in there. And then we can tighten it down. And it gives it a little more bite. And then we'll do the same to this side. And then I'll go ahead and tighten those. Got the battery in. Let's see if this battery's any good that I dug out of the garbage. All right. Ugh. Now there's lots of evidence of mouse nest and yeah. stuff in there. Pulling some stuff out of there. I found a breaks and scrap them plug boot. I'm gonna see if it'll work. There's the part number. It's a little short one. What are you doing, slippers? Where does this go? I don't know yet. Maybe it doesn't need to go anywhere. Got to get it running first. Mm. All right, out comes the spider. Uh, 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 uh. This isn't an itchy bitchy spider. Uh, yeah. This well, spider, when you get bit by it, you'll know you got bit. Yeah, we'll make, don't make me go and get my spider knife, okay? Yeah, we'll go get it, old man. Maybe I will. Cut this old boot off. Spidey senses are tingling. Whoa! Well, that thing shut. What? Just came off. Just gotta plug it back on. <laughs> you learned anything from hanging around here? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Boy, that thing is in there tough. Looks like it. Good thing I got a sharp spidey knife. thing is like really doesn't want to come off. All right, so I'll spray a little lube on there so we could slide it on there. Some gel lube, again, which we sell in our online store. And let's 
see if this boot will work. Yeah. The terminal sticks out a little. Oh, well that's nice. You know what? I'm gonna put a new end on it. I've got new ends. There you go. And then I could try out my new crimping tool, which we got from a tarot fan for crimping those ends on there. Check it out. Oh, I gotta see that. So tarot fan Lonnie, who's been a long time fan of, of our uh, YouTube channel, sent me these crimpers for crimping on these spark plug wires because he saw me doing it in a video and I didn't have the right tool, so he sent it to me. These are pretty nice. You could strip back. It's got cutters on it, so you could strip back the coil wire and it'll crimp it. So I got my new end stick on there. And then I'll stick this in the in the tool. Now sometimes you have to because I've used this thing a few times already off camera. Sometimes you gotta just kind of pinch this together a little bit. Just kind of squeeze them together. Then you stick it in the tool. And get get it all lined up and then squeeze it and look at that perfect crimp on there nice tight crimp thanks Lonnie you're the greatest thank you thank you thank you it's like factory now yeah are you gonna keep talking Ugh. How comes the spider? Oh! Look what I got. Denny got me one too. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's let's tangle then. Come on. Uh, Have a good old fashioned knife fight. Spider to spider. Uh, All right, put that down. Okay. Before we hurt somebody or each other or ourselves. All right, so the gel lube's on there. And there, that's nice. That terminal fits in there a lot, a lot better. And then I'll put a new plug in this thing, so I'll leave that off. So we know that it will start, it had spark from shooting some, some helper juice in there. So we're just gonna have to go through the fuel system and hopefully, which I'm kind of doubting, Throw that away. We don't need that anymore. I think it's pretty fresh. Well, then you dig it out of the trash. You like digging in the garbage. Yeah, I love it. I'll probably take that later to take it home. To rebuild the carburetor, we'll have to see if that fuel pump works. If that fuel pump doesn't work, I'm going to have to uh, do my fuel pump trick, put a vacuum operated pump on there. You might have seen me do that before where I eliminate this mechanical one. And look at these cables. Look at it. They got them running right next to the muffin. I'm gonna have to kind really of zip tie spot. that up out of the way. I mean, the choke does work, and the throttle is moving. So probably just spray some gel lube on there on the outside of that, and that should take care of that. But let's get the carburetor off, and let's get this gas tank off. And run all new fuel lines for a new fuel filter in it. Yeah, just stand there and drink your coffee. Yeah, well, that's what I do. You could be like, oh, Carol, you need a screwdriver to get that off? Oh, Carol, do you need a 516 for that? No, you just stand there. No, I'm just trying to learn. And annoy me. Just trying to learn. You can't be taught. What? You're one of them people that can't be taught. You got a lot of tools at home? Oh yeah. Like a lot? Millions of dollars worth. Like a lot, like enough to fill a dumpster? Well then you should go home and throw them all in a dumpster. Yeah, oh, real nice. 
you, you should just throw your tools away. I don't think so. Well, the little nut went flying off of there. Did you see where it went? No. Ugh. Maybe you can find it for me. Down here. While you're standing there doing nothing. What are you looking for? Flashlight, it was right there. Why don't you shine it in this tank? Make yourself useful. There's two settings on that thing. All right, hang Again, on. Again, I coffee yeah. This light came from a fan. His name escapes me. Now squeeze the trigger again, it'll go to low beam. There you go. Yeah, a lot of cool fans sending you some pretty cool stuff. What we can't see in there. Can't see in there? No, it's too bright. It looks bright. pretty rusty. All right, turn that light off. Well, I was gonna look. You can't see nothing. That's for, we need a, like a flashlight flashlight. How's that, better? Pretty, I think we could just rinse it out. It's really not that horrible. plug up your fuel system. What did I do with that croissant? This is a French, this is a French wrench. It's called a croissant wrench. It's made in France. I found it. Some people pronounce it crescent. Did you find it? Yep. Ding, 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 ding. I call it a croissant wrench. I think I got, I think I have these new too. I'll probably put a new one in. But we gotta get all that crap out of there. Wow. Good thing we got this on camera. Trying to help out my buddy. Flipper's actually doing some work. Trying yeah. to help out my little buddy. Documented. Take this off. This has got to come off. Where's my French? My French wrench. Some people call it a fits all. Give me that fits all. And then take it over in that parts washer after you get that out and rinse it out real good. on that stud. Now. Let's 
since I'm in here, might as well pull this off and I'll check them head bolts, make sure they're tight. They like to, they like to get loose, they stretch from heat over time. And I gotta get a 716 to loosen these and take these off, so let me get a 716. The fits all won't fit in there. Yeah, these I should only have to loosen. I think these are slotted. There's just two of them on there. And I think I forgot to mention the year of this. 1974 is this power tank. And how I know that is from the serial number on the engine. Because I've got a, a crawler manual and in the front of the manual it tells you serial number ranges and what years they were made, these K series. So we looked up the serial number and found out it was a 74. I think we mentioned that. I think Elfskins mentioned that in the beginning of the video. When Dooley and uh, Nathan dropped it off. They seem to be tight. And we got a fluffy nest in there, big time. You want me to turn it on? Yeah, I want you to war wash it. Wash it out. Not to get in there with a shop vac. Suck out that fluffy nest. It's a good thing I took all this off. I'll get this. Get this carver trader off. I thought they were 716, so I was wrong. They're half inch. Disconnect the choke cable. Put this back on so I don't lose it. Now there's a couple ways you can remove this throttle link. There's a little clip back here you can pop off. And then it goes flying and you can't find it. Or you could slide this little cover here back like that and then it'll pop off that socket, which is easier and safer than tr losing that little E-clip that's on there. And you just flip it out of the way. And then you gotta loosen these bolts up and just start walking it back. If you can get one of them out, Let me cut this fuel line too over here. You can get one of the bolts out and then you can just slide it off of there. We'll have to put a new gasket on. I got. Stick that back in there so we don't lose it. Now we can, uh, this looks like a fairly new carburetor. It might even be one of those, looks like one of those aftermarket ones you buy. So who knows? Think, yeah, yeah, it does. It looks like an aftermarket. This ain't an original one. Is that the right wrench here? Fits all. Let's take a peek inside. This is a 14 horse. Crawler K series. Not bad. Really not bad at all. 
I'm just going to rinse it out and put it back together. How's that tank? Uh, I don't know. What do you know? Not a whole lot. Then we're going to have to hook some fuel lines with some gas to this. Crank it over and see if this... Oh, there's a mess. Got one of them pads laying around here, Slipper? Throw it on the ground here. Get my auxiliary tank, hook it up to this. This is all this is all going in the trash. Alright, so I figure the tank's gonna sit like that. Let's see if oh yeah, look at it, it's already coming out. Let's see if it'll pump. Oops. Let's not let them get caught. Got the plug wire off. Pumping. Should be shooting out. It's just kind of dribbling out. Yeah, we'll do my old fuel pump trick. We'll get rid of that fuel pump. So did you ever have a hard to get off gasket and you got one of these typical gasket scrapers for scraping it off? And this one's on there so hard, it doesn't want to come off very good. This gasket scraper is amazing. And we sell these in our online store. Now, the only drawback is it's only good on cast iron because when you try to use this on aluminium it tends to dig into the aluminium but for cast iron it makes quick work of getting that gasket off look at that I was struggling to get it off with this thing and I'm, I'm really pushing on that and it don't want to come off. This thing, look at that. Because on this cast iron, you know, you can push on it. You don't have to worry about it gouging the metal. So as you can tell, this is the original fuel pump. And it's shot, it's not working. So my trick, Throw that right in the garbage. Oh. As I make a plate that fits over this, I'm gonna make it out of a piece of flat stock, and I'm gonna drill and tap a hole. I'm gonna try to get that hole as close to the top of this as I can, because this is where we're gonna pick up vacuum off the block, and plus plug off that, that hole in there. Because we need vacuum to operate that vacuum operated pump. So I'll get a piece of flat stock, we'll drill two holes in it, I got the gasket, and then I'll drill and tap a 1 8 hole in it, and we'll put a 1 8 fitting in there. So in order to make this, this plate, I've got some inch and a quarter wide by quarter inch thick flat stock. It doesn't have to be this thick, as long as it's an inch and a quarter wide, and you use the gasket for the fuel pump as your template. So I'll lay that on there and I'll mark the holes and I'll mark where I'm gonna cut it and then I'm gonna mark right at the top here where I wanna put that fitting. I want it real close to the top. And the reason that is we don't wanna get any kind of oil in that pulse line. Cause if you get oil in there, then it's not gonna pump because it needs, that, that hose has got to be clear. So that's why I try to get it as close to the top as possible. And it will be fine. I've, I've done this many, many times on a lot of my own equipment. I've never had any problem. I did have problem with one customer that we did it. And that reason he had a problem is because he overfilled it with oil. 
you put way too much oil in it and it blocked off the the hose so now I'll center punch this and then we'll uh, drill it out tap it try out my new drill press let me show you my drill press I got check out my new drill press I got <laughs> this thing's pretty nice I bought it on an online auction there's an auction site I go to and they're in the next town over they have a consignment auction so I saw this and I thought I'm gonna bid on it you know what I paid for this seventeen dollars and fifty cents and then I had to pay tax and a buyer's premium it was like twenty two dollars <laughs> this thing is nice it even came with a, a free 3 8 drill bit was in it okay so let's drill the holes in this so the outside holes 932 and for 1 8 pipe tap 1132 so let's drill the outer ones first Somebody had given to me many, many years ago. There it is. It's an old Craftsman. Even though it's got those different pulleys on there, I could never adjust the speed correctly. You know, a lot of times you need to slow the drill down if you're drilling big holes with big drill bits. I can never get that thing to work right. I'm going to keep it. But this one, I could speed up or slow down. Just gotta tap it, take it over to my chop saw, and uh, cut it. Put my fitting in there. I'll put that carburetor back on. Hook up the fuel lines, put a fuel filter in it. And as that annoying elk skin says, well, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up! Where is it? So I need a fitting to put in there now. Now you got two choices. You can take one of the fittings off the old fuel pump, but they're 90 degree ones, and you can screw it in there and have it stick up. Or I like to use a straight fitting. Now it's got a Briggs and Scrapham part number, but this is a Stens part. Let me get Spidey out. Now we'd already Teflon taped this one. We probably used it on something else and it didn't work so we put it back in the bag. And then I've got a new shut off. This one's a rotary. It doesn't have that little filter on the end. I think this is for a lawn boy. And the reason I buy this one is because the brakes and scrap them one with the little filter on it is a lot more money than this one. So since we're putting an inline fuel filter in it, we really don't need that sock. I think this is one for a lawn boy. But that's the part number, 8546. from Rotary. 
So that's what we're going to use to put in the bottom of the tank. So let me go ahead and tighten this up. I think I had it on the wrong side. That's the thing with pipe tap. It's a tapered tap. So if it doesn't fit on the one side, you got to flip it around. And you don't want to, you know, with a pipe tap, you don't want to run the tap all the way through. I think it's seven, seven or nine threads from the end of the tap is where you're supposed to stop. And then if you know if you didn't go deep enough, then then tap it a little more. But you don't want to go, you don't want to tap it all the way through because then you'll end up bottoming this fitting out and it may not seal. So that's a good amount of threads in there by hand before I tighten it. Just in case you don't know how pipe taps work, they're tapered. That's how it seals. It seals on the taper. As you're driving it in, it seals it. So I'll tighten that up. We got the gasket and we'll get the fuel pump. And we'll start hooking up our lines and put the carburetor back on. I still got to get that. Slipper, why don't you suck that rat's nest out of there for me? Yeah, uh, great. Whoa. That's the fuel pump. Move that out of the way. Ugh. Get your arthritic hands over there and start getting that backing going. Or you can leave. Yeah, that only go home. That's another, you got another choice. That other choice is leaving. I'm good at vacuuming because mother always has me vacuuming the house. So, Terrell's got the right man on a job. <laughs> or fluffy nest cleaned out of there. Good thing we took that apart to do that. We had to take some covers off because all them cooling fins were all plugged up and this is an air-cooled engine. We, you need those fins to be clear. So we got that all clear. And the carburetor came out nice and clean. So I'm gonna stick this back together. We got our plate mounted with our fitting in there for our fuel pump. And then I'm gonna show you the fuel pump we're gonna use. We're gonna use this brakes and scrap them, vacuum operated pump. Crawler makes the exact same pump, but it's like double the price. It's just a vacuum, Makuni vacuum operated pump. Makuni makes these for Honda, kind of sucky, brakes and scrap them, crawler. Sometimes the, the clocking of the fittings may be different, but this one's made for Briggs. It's got their emblem on it. Even though it says Makuni on the back, the crawler one, same thing, says Makuni on it. Exact same clocking of the fittings and everything, but it's more money. So you can buy it in a shop pack of five, part number 4271, and this is the part number for it individually, 808656, if you wanted to buy just one. But we go through so many of them, I buy them in a shop pack. So you got three fittings on there. These fittings have little indicators on it, like P is for pulse, so that's the one. That goes from the crankcase to here. If I don't know if the camera can see it, but there's a little arrow right there. And it's pointing up, so that's your end. That's the fuel coming in. And there's a little arrow on this one here, and that's the fuel going out. So now we'll just find a spot to put this. May even just use the hoses itself, the the fuel line to hold it in place. We don't have to mount it down. If I can find a place to mount it or at least grab one hole, 
I will, otherwise I'll just let it hang by the, by the hoses. So now we're ready to put this thing all back together. Well, I kind of thought this might happen, and this may have happened to you too. Whenever you start to remove all that rust from one of these rusty tanks, even though this thing was full of gas, uh, once we got all the rust out of it, then all these pinholes started popping up. Now I'm chasing these pinholes in this tank. So I got them sealed up with our Carol putty, which is a two-part putty that you knead together. And we sell it in our online store, Resist Gas and Oil. So I already patched this big area, and then I missed another little area, some more pinholes over here. And then I filled it again with some gas, and then I found it was weeping over here, and I found a couple of more pinholes. So you sand it real good with some 80 grit paper to give it some tooth. Some tooth. So the putty will stick to it. And then it helps to wet your fingers a little bit if the putty starts sticking to your fingers. So now we gotta let that dry. And I wanna get this thing going. So I'm gonna hook up my auxiliary tank in the meantime. I need to, I need to, to go inside that tank too and, and uh, try to get more of that rust out and seal it from the inside. I've done it on other tanks, but we gotta move on. We gotta get this thing going. So, got all the rat's nests and everything cleared out. Let's see uh, what works. Oh, I put a knob on there too. I found a knob from a Honda lawnmower. And I oiled up all the cables with our gel lube, which we sell in our online store. So I lubed up the cable, the choke cable. So let's see what works on this thing. Let's see if the headlights work and all that kind of stuff. So turn on the key. And this is the light switch. Oh yeah, headlights work. They're working. And I noticed just now that the little light in the gauge is working. See? Even that's working. See it turning on? Now, it's got an electric PTO clutch for the front. So, Mr. Cameraman, look up here. Let's see if this thing works. So I'm gonna pull the switch. Well, well, yep, it works. Watch right there. See it engage? You can hear the little click. Wow, that even works. Turn the lights off. All right, so we got it cleaned out. Got oil in it. Let's hook up that auxiliary tank, and then I'm gonna show you that the uh, fuel pump works. We gotta go over the fuel pump a little bit. My fuel pump conversion. Is this gonna fit in here? I'll put it on this milk crate because it's gonna be temporary. All right, so let's go over this fuel pump. So whenever you do this conversion that I've, I've come up with, you got to make sure the fuel pump is up high because we don't want any oil getting trapped in this pulse line. If you've got it down low, oil is going to get in there and it's not going to pump. So I did notice that there are some threaded holes in this cover. So I think I'm going to just bolt it right to one of them. And then I can uh, hook my fuel line right here. And uh, this line is real short. That's going to go to the tank. But I did manage to get a small brakes and scrap them. Uh, one of those pancake fuel filters in there. So I'll just pull this little piece of line off for now. And then we'll hook this to it. 
and then I'll show you that my little fuel pump trick works. We should start to uh, pump some fuel. Let me get around here, Mr. Cameraman. Well, we got a kink in the hose. That's not good. Pumps real good. Got good, good strong flow. Alright, so we'll hook that up. Let me find a bolt to stick in there. And I can see we got more crap coming out. When we fire this thing up, I'm sure a lot of crap's gonna come out. Alright, let me find a bolt. Here we go. Here's one. So now I'm able to bring this in from underneath because it's kind of kinking that. We don't want to. Turn it back on. All right, let me get a wrench and tighten that up. Hold on. nest in there. Again, it's one of those aftermarket carburetors. But it does run. Start it again.
And it looks like uh, the ammeter's working too. It looks like it's charging. Let me start it up again. gas in this auxiliary tank. Oh no, it's empty. Alright, well, that may have a lot to do with the way it's running. Alright, I went out in the junkyard and I scrounged up this old tank and zip tied it to it. Put some dinosaur juice in there. So let's try this again, see if it runs any better. Try readjusting that carburetor. If not, I'll take it off and Take it apart and go through it. I just want to see if this thing will drive. So we choke it. crap around out here so we can get this thing outside so we can throttle it all the way up see how fast it'll go see the tires looks like I could use a set of tires I know there's a lot of stuff that's froze on here we're gonna have to do the old heat quench like this brake this little pin here to lock these brake pedals together you know so you can you can break each wheel separately or tie them together this is froze. I know all this stuff for this three-point hitch back here. Gonna have to heat and quench all that, kind of get that freed up. But it runs, it lives again. 
We're running. Woo! Wheel horse or wheel horse? Power King! I need to put my crown on when I take it for a ride. Let me move that uh, hustler. Open the gate. We'll see how fast this thing goes. resurrected the power king you probably didn't know this but the united states has a king too me <laughs> terrell i'm king terrell i'm the power king all right well there's a few more things i need to do to it but we're trying to get this ready it's crunch time we're trying to get this video done and get this thing kind of running and working to take to a show where they're featuring these power kings and nathan and his dad will be there so I'm gonna pressure scrub it, finish fixing the tank, put the tank on, do my little heat quench trick to the pins and free up all that stuff. I think I, I might have enough time to, to get a, a new set of front tires because these tires are, the one over here is about ready to blow. But man, did we get lucky with this, this turd. I mean, everything works, the lights all work, it's, it's charging, the battery's charging. Uh, I was worried that, you know, that clutch might be bad or it might not have any brakes or there might be some more frozen things, but it didn't take too much to get it going. So I mean, once I pressure scrub it and get the tank in there and put the air cleaner back on, I might not, you know, do too much more to it. I don't think I'm gonna like totally restore it. I think I might just clear coat the whole thing just spray spray it with clear but all I have to do all that after the show I'm not gonna have time to do all that but at least I got most of it done so subscribe to this YouTube channel Terrell fixes all I'm King Terrell I'm the power king follow me with your power kings on Facebook and Instagram Go to our web store, you can buy a lot of those products that I use to get this thing going. Or we have other stuff like this shirt, this work shirt. Out of all the shirt designs we have, I like this shirt. This is like one of my favorite shirts. You gotta get one of these. I like this shirt. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! I'm the king. I'm the power king. <laughs> <laughs>